Jeff, somebody out there. Uh, let's take a look at this section. We're going to solve quadratics using square roots. So you may be asking yourself why I got Dr. Evil in there. I'm going to tie it all together. We're actually going to, when we're done with this, look at the root of all evil. So this is a big section. We're going to have a little math, figure out the root of all evil. Should be awesome. Let's start things off with this. So we're going to use square roots to solve these quadratics. So if I want to solve this, this is something you can probably do in your head. You're saying, what number squared is 25? So I can say, oh yeah, no problem. X is what? X is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. But be careful, because what is negative 5 squared? Negative 5 times negative 5 is also 25. So this actually has two answers, just like on the graph. Remember, we were graphing things, and we'd have those two answers, so it's 5 or negative 5. A little trick we're going to do is we're going to start writing them like this. This is going to be x plus or minus 5. So they mean the same thing. This is all the same thing. If I say x equals 5 or negative 5, it's saying like plus or minus 5. So the steps I want to see here, or the steps we're going to do to solve this is we're going to square root both sides. So this is why we're using square roots to solve it. What's the square root of x squared? Well, they're opposites. They cancel each other out. This is like subtracting to get rid of addition or multiplying to get rid of div uh, division. They cancel each other out and you're left with x equals this plus or minus 5. Excellent. Can we do it as in, uh, like an equation? Sure, we want to get x squared by itself, just like we always want to get x by itself. So we're going to divide by 3. And we're looking at x squared equals what? 33 divided by 3 is 11. So I'm kind of stuck here. When I've got the x squared by itself, then I'm going to go ahead and square root both sides. So what happens when I square root that? I get left with x. And then this is going to be plus or minus the square root of 11. But I want the decimal form of this. So we're going to have to put this in the calculator. The square button is a little bit in blue here above the x squared. So if it's in blue, you got to use second. So we're going to go second square root of 11. And I'm going to get this 3.31. So this is around nearest hundredth. So it goes tenth hundredths. We're going to round to two decimal places. So this is actually 3.32. Be careful, because if you leave it like that, that's wrong. This is right. It's plus or minus. If you want to write it out as 3 plus, I'm sorry, positive 3.32 or negative 3.32, that's OK. Or I prefer, and that's what I'm going to use here, because we're going to use it next section. We're going to write it like that. Awesome. Moving on. Uh, you can pause it and try this one by yourself if you want, or you can work it with me here. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so I want to get x by itself. So it's just like solving an equation. You know, these cancel. We're left with 2x squared equals 10 plus 5 is 15. And then I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I'm really looking at x squared equals 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So don't freak out if you have a decimal here. Still put that in your calculator. So we're going to fire this up here. We're going to say the square root of 7.5. Boom, what do we got here? Some crazy decimal. So again, round it to the second decimal, to the hundredths. So I'm going to say this is really x equals plus or minus 2.7, was it 7.4? Let me double check that. I don't want to miss that. Yes, round that up to 7.4. Excellent. So there it is right there. That's half the notes right there. This could be the fastest section ever. Here we go. What if we don't want decimals? So decimals are nice, but they are an approximation. What if I want the exact perfect real for real answer. Let's do it. So it's the same way. I want to get x squared by itself. So I'm going to x squared by itself. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Boom, that's gone. So now I'm looking at 2x squared equals 80. And how do I get the x by itself? Well, I need to divide both sides by 2. So I'm looking at 40 equals x squared. So that's pretty awesome. Now I'm going to square root it just like before. Square root it. So that cancels that out. So I'm left with x equals what? Plus or minus the square root of 40. Uh, that's it. Some people like to write the x first. That looks a little bit prettier, I suppose. Plus or minus square root of 40. If numbers can look prettier, I don't know. Uh, it looks a little bit better. So that's the answer. Except, oh, it's not simplified. It wants it simplified. Remember back, Mr. Kelly was showing us how to simplify radicals. Well, what does this break down into? Well, the biggest perfect square I know is 4 times 10. 4 times 10 is 40. So really, what's and the reason I picked 4 is I know the square root of 4. This is plus or minus to radical 10. So that's going to be the trickiest part of these is maybe just adding it all together, putting your uh, radicals in there. So I don't want a decimal in this case. This is the exact perfect answer right there, the reduced radical. Fantastic. Let's do the next one. Does it freak you out with a fraction? Hopefully not. I just want to get x by itself. So what do I need to do? I'm going to times both sides by 3. Boom. Those cancel. 3 times that is 75. 75 equals x squared. When I've got that x squared by itself, what am I going to do? 
square root both sides. So I'm really looking at this is the square root. As soon as you introduce that square root, it becomes plus or minus. As soon as you introduce that, because we don't know, are you talking about the positive or the negative version? We're going to put them both in there, and that gives you the x. I like to write the x first, so it's x plus or minus radical 75. But is that simplified? Uh, we can go farther in this one. It doesn't always simplify, but in this case, I think what? We, the biggest square that I know is 25 times 3. So that's the same thing. 25 times 3 is 75. I pick 25 because what's the square root of 25? It is 5. So again, we're going to simplify some radicals. Uh, hopefully that's getting pretty good for you now. If you want to try the last one or work it through with me, you can pause it or uh, go ahead and do it with me. Let's go purple. Mix it up a little bit here. So I'm going to solve this bad boy, get x by itself. And 4x squared equals 16. Divide this by 4, divide by 4. We're looking at x squared equals, what, 4? So that's pretty great. My last step here is to square root both sides. Remember when I square root, it becomes plus or minus. If you do not do that in the master check, it is wrong. You will fail the master check because every problem is going to be plus or minus. This cancels. What's the square root of 4? Does that simplify? It does. In this case, it breaks down to 2, so a positive 2 or a negative 2. Holy cow, we are cruising the final two questions. Then I'll show you the root of all evil here. Um, all right, so anything weird can happen. Sure, there's always some kind of exception to the rule or weirdness. What happens if I, when I'm working on this one? So everything looks grand. I'm going along here, and I get x squared equals negative 5. I want to get x by itself, so what i got to do, i got to square root. Uh-oh, we've got a problem here. What is this? This is plus or minus the square root of negative 5. Can you take the square root of negative numbers? What does the calculator say? Square root of negative 5 is this. It's a non-real answer, which means it's imaginary. So this is impossible. You cannot take the square root of negative, unless maybe you're, you're Chuck Norris. He can do it. But it, everyone else besides Chuck Norris cannot do it. So this is impossible. You cannot do it. So what do we say? This is no solution. You cannot take the square roots of negative. Why? Because any number times itself is positive. So unless we're talking imaginary numbers, which we won't get to till algebra 2, you can't do that one. So there is the weird case right there for you. Uh, fantastic. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the last problem here. This is awesome. Only one page of notes. I love it. Um, check this problem out. It puts some interesting things in here. Sometimes people will be like, hey, Mr. Bruss, it's a negative. You can't square root a negative. Uh, so I can't do this problem. Wait a minute. you got to be careful. First, you got to get the variable by itself. So we've got to isolate x. So let's do that first. So let's go our same old, same old. We're going to, boom, subtract 4 from both sides. I'm left with negative 2x squared equals, whoa, whoa, big number here. That's OK. So that gets more negative. So it should be negative 1664. I picked this for a reason. I wanted a big number here. Um, so let's get x by itself. We're going to divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2, this cancels. And we're looking at x squared equals, check this out, negative by negative is a positive, so we're OK there. And I think if you divide this, you should get 832. So pretty crazy. If we're going to keep solving this, you want to square root both sides, just like we were doing. Boom, those cancel. We're left with x equals plus or minus 832. The key is this is a really big radical to simplify. So, so to divide this really big number, you know, to reduce it, I'm going to say, well, I could list all my perfect squares here and say, what is the biggest one that divides it? Well, this could go on for a while, you know. I could be trying. This is a big number. I know 4 is probably, I'm guessing 4 is going to go in there, but what about 9? What about 36? So I could guess and check for a while, or I'm going to show you this cool little trick here. So if you go to your calculator uh, and go to your y equals up here, you can type that number in, 832. And we did this for factoring. So before you could divide this by x, if you do this, this would show you all the factors. Any number that evenly divides 832, uh, and this helps us with factoring, all the factors of 832. Difference is I only want factors that are perfect squares, so you need to square this. I only want to know what numbers that are 4, 9, 25, 36 evenly divide this. And then all you have to do is go to your table. So it's in blue, so hit second, second table. And then, whoa, what is that? Ah, so my this is left on the wrong mode. I was asking it questions before. I don't care about these specifics. I need it to fill it out. So remember, let's go to table set and take a look at table set. So second window. And check it out. My independent variables on ask. I was asking it questions. But let's go to autofill. I want it to automatically fill up my table. And then come up here, review this. This is as table start. Where do I want to start? I don't want to start on 50. I want to start on 0 
or 1. And then this is what you want to count by the change. This little triangle means change. Change in table. Let's count by 1s. So double check your table. Make sure it's set up like this um, to hook you up for this little trick here. Then go back to table. And what is going on here? This is awesome. Let's bring it over here and talk about this. So here's my table. So I've got something like this. What does this mean? Well, what's going on here? This says 1 times 832 is 832. I knew that. This says, remember, we squared it. 2 squared, uh, so 4, times 208 is 832. So if I wanted to, I could say the square root of 4 times the square root of 208 is the square root of 832. That's awesome. What's good about that is I know that's 2, 208. So check that out. So really, if I look at it on the table, right here, I could say 2 radical 208, just like that. That is the simplified form. Isn't that cool? Or 4. This would mean 4 times 52, root 52. Look how easy that is. Mr. Kelly, I don't think showed you that trick. Um, but really, it means radical 16 times radical 52 is that. So that's what I'm looking for. So is there? I want the biggest one that goes in there. So 0 is an error. You can't divide by 0, unless maybe you're Chuck Norris. Uh, but come down here and find the biggest one. I think this is it. When they start to be about the same size, you've gone as far as you can. So this is really what? 8. And I better bring this in here. Let's bring that bad boy in there just so we can look at it. So cool. So this reduces to what? This reduces to uh, 8 radical 13. Don't forget your plus or minus. That is the answer. Now that really means, so be careful, that really means that you are saying what? The square root of 64 times the square root of 13, which gives you that so I'm gonna but I'm gonna go straight to the middleman and uh, and write it out like that so there it is that's the end of the video I promised you that I'd show you what is the root of all evil here it is chew on that for a while so that is all real math symbols there see if you can decode what the root of all evil is I think you probably have a good idea especially if you are in Mr. Sullivan's class uh, I'm gonna end you with a little bit of uh, Dr. Evil clip and good luck on the match check. Peace out. But you just don't get it, do you? You don't. It's no hassle. But I'm, all I'm saying, they're going to get a... I, I'm just... Which, which, knock, knock. Who's there? Look, Shh. let me tell you a little story about a man named... Shh. Shh. Even before you start... That was a preemptive shh. Just know I have a whole bag of shh with your name on it.